Beyond the Basics of Attachments. In this module, we will be talking about attachments with clear aligners. Course outline will include what are attachments and why do we need them? Attachments functions, shapes, and uses. Patients' acceptance of attachments. And then we'll run through how to place attachments. And lastly, we'll talk about some other features with clear aligners, such as bite ramps. Attachments are an important part of Eon's clear aligner treatment. Thus, it is crucial for any practitioner providing clear aligners treatment for patients to have an in-depth theoretical and practical knowledge about attachments and their use. So here we start. What are attachments? Attachments are extensions that are placed on the tooth surface to aid the aligners in difficult movements. They are made of composite material and are placed by the practitioner at the beginning of the treatment using special templates provided by Eon. Choice of attachment, its shape, size, and position on the tooth will be customized for each case according to the intended movement, as well as the shape and size of the tooth, while taking into consideration any interferences that might result. When submitting a case, a special section is available to specify any attachment restrictions, as shown in this tooth chart here. Press on any specific tooth and its color will turn blue to indicate attachment restriction, and this will be followed in treatment planning. If there are no restrictions for attachment placement, it is recommended to keep and follow Eon's recommendation for attachments, as those are designed and placed individually for each case in a way that achieves best predictability for the movements. Attachments will be indicated in the virtual 3D plan video as green-colored extensions on the tooth, as shown in the graphic. After getting an idea about what attachments are, we move forward to understand why we need those attachments. Attachments will work as a handle to the tooth to allow the aligner to apply forces and move the teeth in the three-dimensional space. The flat surface of the attachment, also called the active surface, provides leverage for the aligner to apply enough force to move the teeth. Let's go back to aligner biomechanics to understand why we need attachments. How do aligners move teeth? Remember, aligners are removable appliances that work with a push force, unlike fixed braces, which apply a pull force to move the teeth. So the aligner needs a flat surface to push against to be able to achieve proper tooth movements. When that surface is not readily available due to the shape of the tooth, that's where attachments become essential. To understand more, here is an example showing a transverse view of an incisor covered by the aligners. Its rectangular shape will enable the aligner to push against its edges and rotate the tooth in the desired position, as shown in the diagram. Now, let's imagine the same thing for a cone-shaped tooth. Imagine trying to rotate this canine, for example, with aligners alone. Its shape does not provide a flat surface for the aligner to exert their push force. Here is where attachments come in handy. The aligner will use the flat surface of the attachment to push and rotate the canine. Now, moving forward, attachments can be classified into two categories according to function. They can be either active or passive. Active attachments are used to achieve some difficult movements. Some examples for those movements are difficult rotations of canines, premolars, and molars due to their shape and size, root control movements needed in mesiodistal bodily movements, and tooth angulations. Remember that aligners cover the crown part of the tooth only, so to control the movement of the root, we need an attachment to create a counterbalancing force to control root movement and minimize tipping, and of course, with extrusion movements. Passive attachments are used for retention. Examples include, in expansion or retraction movements, 
and in cases of short clinical crowns. If we are attempting to move or retract the whole anterior segment, the posterior part of the aligner will lose its grip, hence retention attachments are used. Now let's move on and talk about different attachment shapes used by Eon. The photos here show horizontal, vertical, and rotational attachments. And here is the biplane rotational attachment, root control attachment, and the last one on the right is the extrusion attachment. Next in this module, we will talk about each one of those with more in-depth details, including when and where they're placed and the purpose they achieve. Here we go. Now we will start discussing horizontal beveled rectangular attachment. This is usually placed on molars and premolars and serves multiple functions, first of which is aligner retention. It is also needed when applying buccolingual movement of posterior teeth and for extrusion of premolars and molars. Previously, attachments used were pure rectangular with no bevels. This meant that the aligner needs to be fully seated over the perpendicular edges. Otherwise, the teeth might not track well, or even worse, move in an unintended direction. Beveled attachments have resolved this issue and will facilitate insertion and removal of the aligners. Next is the vertical beveled rectangular attachment. Vertical attachments come with two active surfaces that enable root control movements, while attempting to move the teeth in mesiodistal directions. It can be placed on molars and premolars, canines, lower incisors, and upper laterals. Vertical beveled rectangular attachments also play a role in aligner retention. It is also used for mesiodistal movements of posterior teeth and to control the axis of upper and lower anterior teeth with mesiodistal movements and angulations. Moving forward to the extrusion attachment, the graphic shows the shape of the extrusive attachment from a frontal and a side view. The gingival slope provides a surface for the aligner to apply its forces for absolute extrusion. This attachment can be placed on upper and or lower incisors and canines. Extrusion attachment is a necessity whenever any anterior teeth extrusion is planned. It can also be used to control the torque of anterior teeth, especially when a good amount of labial translation is planned in cases of crossbite. Next is the rotational attachment. This is usually placed on canines and premolars when they're being rotated. Remember what we said earlier about rotation of cone-shaped teeth with aligners. With the rotational attachments, the active surface, which is the flat one, is used to apply a rotational force along with vertical forces to rotate the teeth and prevent any unwanted intrusion forces during rotation. Here is the biplane rotational attachment. This is usually placed on upper lateral incisors and lower central or lateral incisors. The planes of this attachment will help provide extrusion with simultaneous rotation or tipping. And last is the root control attachment, which consists of two half elliptical attachments that provide two active surfaces for forces to be applied on. This will prevent tipping movements and achieve better control of root position during mesiodistal movements. It is usually placed on upper central incisors and upper canines. It is used in cases when we're planning diastema closure or midline correction, and for any correction of mesiodistal tooth angulation. Note that their function is somehow similar to vertical attachments if placed on anterior teeth as these two provide two active surfaces for application of forces. However, root control attachments were found to be more aesthetic. That's why they substitute the vertical ones on anterior teeth. Here is a useful table that summarizes some of the most common movements applied in orthodontics and the attachment needed for each specific tooth. When talking about attachments, we have to think about one important point. 
A patient who steps into our office seeking clear aligners treatment as a removable transparent orthodontic alternative might be hesitant to have anything bonded to his or her teeth. However, emerging evidence suggests that clear aligners with attachments are considered more aesthetic when compared to other fixed orthodontic appliances. Now, after discussing all the theory behind attachments and their placement, let's move to the clinical tips on how to place attachments. Start with checking your stage progress sheet, which comes with the aligner kit. This will indicate when and where attachments should be placed. Check your template sent with your Eon aligner kit. Rinse it with cold water and test the fitting. The next step is to get our armamentarium ready for bonding attachments. You will need dental explorer, etching gel, bond, composite material, light cure, and an optional isolating material or petroleum jelly. Next step is to isolate and prepare the teeth that need attachments with etching and bonding. Apply a small amount of composite in the attachment pocket, slightly overfilling them. A useful tip is to apply a very light coat of petroleum jelly in the attachment pocket prior to placing composite. This will assist in easier removal of the attachment after composite is fully cured. Fully seat the loaded template and assure the attachment conforms to the teeth. Apply attachments of each quadrant separately. It is usually recommended that no more than three attachments are placed per quadrant simultaneously, as this will affect the insertion and removal of the template. Slight pressure needs to be maintained on the attachments during light curing, according to the manufacturer's instructions. Remove the template and excess flash material using finishing or carbide burrs. Keep in mind that having well-defined attachments is key when considering the aligner's fitting and good tracking of movements aided by attachments. Always check and make sure to avoid excess flash and deformed attachments, as those will impact the treatment. One important feature of clear aligners that is worth discussing here along with attachments is bite ramps. Those are defined as unfilled projections of the aligner placed on the lingual surface of the upper incisors to help in correction of deep bite cases. On the treatment setup simulation, you'll see them as green buttons, just like attachments, on the palatal surface of upper incisors. But those should not be filled with composite or bonded to the patient's teeth, but rather will be a projection of the aligners only. They are intended to achieve two functions. Act as bite raisers to disocclude posterior teeth and allow some extrusion to happen. Apply extra pressure on lower and or upper anteriors during occlusion to intrude them. Thank you for watching.